Hey guys, Dave the Asian here. We are going to talk about my $4,000 AR pistol. So, first things first, I'm running a suppressor. If you haven't seen my video on the Q Thunder Chicken, definitely go check those out, parts one and two. Pretty informative, it'll kind of let you see what it sounds like uh, through a bolt gun. And then my last video, the range day with Dave, or range drills with Dave, um, you can kind of hear a little bit of how it sounds on a 5.56 platform. But if you are in the market for a suppressor wrap, give Rock Precision uh, some consideration. It's a veteran-owned company that make all their suppressor wraps to order. Uh, this happens to be the Freedom Wrap. It's kind of a subdued uh, flag on there. And Paul, uh, who's the owner, was kind enough to give me a coupon code. DTHA2019. Link in the description below. Uh, you'll go ahead and get 10% uh, off your order. Um, as far as We'll go over some of the pricing uh, in or of my AR pistol here. So the Freedom Wrap was about forty-five dollars before the coupon code, uh, and the Suppressor Q Thunder Chicken they retail for about a thousand dollars or so, um, plus your your tax stamp. So here is my AR pistol. Um, we're gonna kind of work from the front all the way back. This is the Q Cherry Bomb. This is kind of Q's um, muzzle brake that's designed to be used with either the Trash Panda or the Thunder Chicken, and it's their solution to uh, kind of their fast attach uh, suppressors. It's an awesome brake, uh, super flat shooting. There's no timing required due to the fact that it has ports, you know, 360 degrees around their muzzle. You just put a little rock tight or rock set on there, uh, torque it down until it's tight, and you're good to go. I've got a Steiner D-Ball D-Squared. This is an infrared uh, laser illuminator as well as a visible laser. Uh, I use this primarily with night vision. Um, I run, you know, some tactical classes. Um, I do hog hunting, and it's just a lot of fun to shoot with night vision. So, um, you know, an infrared laser is definitely something that not everybody needs. But if you want to, you know, change how you shoot or, or add a different dynamic to, you know, shooting, it's definitely something you should consider. Um, there's lots of different versions out there. There's the AT Paul C, which is the civilian version of the PEC 15. Um, Steiner has kind of a, a few lower tier. Um, laser illuminators out there and then I think Hollow Sun has come out with a lot cheaper one and I've heard pretty good things about it I haven't had a chance to have my or get my hands on one yet but um, you know that's something out there and I think that's significantly cheaper uh, than the rest of that these other options and I think that it probably retails around uh, like two hundred three hundred dollars or something but the D-Ball D-Squared is pretty expensive um, depending on where you get it from this retails for about $1,400. Uh, it's definitely worth it. It's super durable. It keeps it zero super well. Um, it's water resistant, um, all that good stuff. But it comes with a pressure pad. Um, you press once for momentary. You double click for uh, constant. And I haven't had any issues with that at all. I am using a BCM, um, kind of stubby foregrip here. Uh, I know what you're thinking, putting a vertical foregrip on an AR pistol, or a pistol for it, that, or any pistol for that matter, um, there's a little bit of concern, but uh, there's some letters from the ATF that state if the overall length of your pistol is uh, greater than 26 inches, they're okay with you having a vertical grip on there. Uh, so I have chosen to do that. I do have a couple hand stops that I keep in my range bag in case you know somebody makes a big deal about it uh, while I'm at the range. But so far, I just referenced that uh, that letter. They go ahead and look it up, and you know they're good to go. On the front, I run a Magpul ASAP. Uh, well, I think the vertical grip is probably thirty dollars or so. Um, the Magpul ASAP is kind of their uh, Picatinny sling adapter or sling mount for uh, you know, any sort of uh, 1913 pattern rail. Super awesome, I haven't had any issues with it, it's rock solid. Uh, you put a little Loctite on the screw on there and it's not coming off. Uh, I think that retails for about $20 as well. The sling I'm running is a Magpul MS3. Uh, it's nothing crazy, you can use it as a, a single point or a dual point uh, sling. You just clip it 
where one of the ends back onto itself you wanted to run it in a single point configuration. Uh, I think this is probably $40 or so, but I haven't had any issues with it. Uh, that being said, I think there's quite a few better products out there than this. Um, the only thing that I don't like about it is while all of the sling attachment points or, or you know, kind of clips and buckles and stuff, they're made out of a really high density polymer, so they're super tough. I haven't had any issues with them breaking. Um, I just think that if you're in kind of more of a tactical or duty environment, you know, plastic doesn't hold up nearly as well as metal, especially if you're in or, or working in a really warm environment. Um, you know, plastic or polymer tends to flex a little bit more when it gets warm. So, moving back, the optic. I have an EOTech 512. Uh, this is kind of the newer version, I think, in like 2012, 2013, you know, a couple years ago. Um, EOTech got in trouble for kind of fudging some of the numbers as far as parallax um, and then some waterproof issues or something. So they fixed all those issues that they had uh, and then kind of, you know, changed up their logo to uh, whatever before. You know, EOTechs are awesome, but I got that at a really good price. I paid about 350 bucks for it. They retail now for anywhere from, yeah, like 350 up to 450 um, Definitely, you need to, you know, do your research, find what works best for you, but <clears throat> nothing special. It's just got, you know, the red illumination. I got the one dot, and it's got the circle, which is really nice for, um, you know, kind of close quarters stuff. You know, that big dot, you can just use that as a point of reference. And if, you know, if you're shooting within 25 yards in, you know, it's you know, a couple inches and getting no matter uh, where you hit on your target. If you are using, uh, you know, kind of a laser illuminator or any sort of uh, device on the front of your rifle or pistol in this case, um, and you're using EOTech without a riser already in it, you are going to need a, a riser of some sorts, especially uh, with this D-ball. Um, it's, it's pretty tall. It's probably over an inch, maybe an inch and a half above the rail, if you can see that. Um, so I've just got a Wheeler half-inch riser on there. It was about $20. I got it at, like, Cabela's or Bass Pro Shop. I don't remember. But it definitely, you know, it gets your optic a little bit higher so you can see over um, your device out front. And then it's designed to be able to co it or do, like, a lower, th lower third uh, co-witness with iron sights. Um, if you notice, I don't run iron sights on this. Uh, there's nothing on the front, nothing on the rear. And that's just because when I go shooting, you know, I'm not using this in combat. Um, I'm not using this for duty. So, uh, you know, I don't think I need to add more weight to my rifle or, or pistol. Um, you know, if my EOTech goes down, I have time to switch out the batteries. And I always keep a couple extra with me. So, um, iron sights aren't that important to me, but if you're in any sort of duty or uh, military, law enforcement, whatever, uh, anything super um, kind of risky or, or where there's a higher threat, where you know if your your optic is gonna make or break, um, you know defending yourself or your comrades, you know iron sights are a must. But for my purposes and my uses, I don't need them. Uh, the upper and the barrel, so. <clears throat> This was, or it's an 11 and a half inch barrel, uh, I think one in seven, no, one in eight twist. Uh, I got it from Brownells. Um, it's nothing fancy. Brownells had like their kind of unbranded or Brownells brand uh, complete upper. Uh, I would compare it to, you know, probably like Anderson or Arrow Precision or Bear Creek or something, whatever it's called. Um, it's nothing special, but it definitely gets the job done. Uh, and it was the right price for me. So it came with the bolt carrier group and the charging handle, so you didn't have to buy that extra. Uh, the 11 and a half inch barrel and the upper receiver already assembled for like 250 bucks. Um, and that was kind of a, you know, I went out on a whim on my part, but, <clears throat> you know, so far I haven't had any issues with it. Uh, the barrel is plenty accurate. You know, I'm getting, you know, between one and two MOA. Uh, at 100 yards, and that's plenty for me, especially out of a short barrel. I'm not using, or I'm not using this for duty, so um, I'm not too concerned about, you know, being, you know, super accurate with it. 
I just want to be able to have a little bit of fun um, and shoot some shoot some paper, essentially. Maybe a hog or two, but that's usually within 100 yards. Um, so one to two MOA is perfect for me. I did have a little bit of concern uh, between or when I bought the kind of unbranded upper and then using an Anderson manufacturing lower, and that. Um, as you can see, they fit together perfectly. There's no wobble to it at all. Uh, there's no gap between the receivers. Um, so it fit together super well. I don't know if that this particular complete upper is still available, but if it is, Anderson lowers fit perfectly with it. We'll talk about the lower a little bit. Um, you know, I think the lower is probably like 40 or 50 bucks. I built this myself, so um, just keep that in mind. Uh, like I said, bolt carrier group charging handle came with the upper receiver, but as far as the lower receiver goes, I'm running a Geisley, uh, single or super dynamic single stage trigger. Breaks at about three and a half pounds. It's awesome. Um, <clears throat> there's very little creep to it, and then you hit just like a solid wall. There's maybe a millimeter or two, and then you hit this wall, and then it just, it's like, just glass. Um, there's nothing... Nothing better that I found. Um, Geisley is an awesome product, uh, and that's probably about two hundred and forty dollars or so. Uh, a little expensive, but um, you know, for what you're getting out of it, you know, it's definitely worth it to me. I'm running. Uh, oh, I will say with the trigger, I did have to install some anti-walk pins on there. Um, the standard ones that you get with your you know lower parts kits, they are going to walk out a little bit, um, especially if you kind of do really rapid fire um, with the at least this this particular Geisley trigger and then this particular lower or Anderson lower. Um, I have a Battle Arms Development uh, 45 degree throw ambidextrous uh, safety on there. Um, that's probably about $70 or so. Um, super awesome. This is my first 45 degree throw uh, safety on there. I haven't had any issues with it. It's super comfortable, super quick to actuate with either my left or my right, or left or right side of the, um, uh, you know, my trigger hand. I can use my thumb or I can use my trigger finger. Um, I really like that it's shortened on the right side so it doesn't interfere, you know, with your hand placement or whatever if you, um, if you have your, your finger indexed along the side, you can still uh, actuate the uh, safety without any issues. Um, I run a Magpul K2 grip. I really like the grip angle on that. Um, you know, over the eight, you know, kind of the standard A2, um, you know, AT, A2 grip angle, and then it's a little bit thicker. So you know, especially when you're you got the kind of stock or brace super close in, um, I like it a little bit better instead of having, having my hand cocked back having it a little bit more uh, flat, you know, it's a lot more comfortable for me. Um, I think that is pretty much it for the lower receiver. Um, we talked about the anti-walk pins, it's just got standard forward assist, uh, mag release is standard, um, that's about it. So moving back, I've got the Magpul um, buffer uh, sling attachment. I think that was probably $40 or so. Um, I really like that you can have it on the left or the right side. Um, it's super durable. I haven't had any issues with it. Um, the welds look good, and it hasn't moved at all or, or backed my cast nut off. As far as the pistol brace goes, um, this is a Spikes Tactical SB3. Uh, I got it as a kit for you know the pistol buffer tube as well as the pistol brace. Uh, it also came with the castle nut. I think that was about probably about $130 or so, um, all said and done. Um, I really like it because it's you know, pretty wide on the back, so when you're shouldering it, which you can do, um, you know, it's very similar to uh, what a normal AR stock feels like. Um, it's super rigid, although it is, you know, it's made out of a, a rubber compound. Um, super awesome. Uh, I did have to put a couple rounds of like electrical tape on the buffer tube um, to kind of keep it from spinning, but since I did that, it's been rock solid, hasn't moved at all, uh, hasn't backed out or, or you know, canted left or right for me at all. 
Inside the buffer tube, I have a JP Enterprises silent capture. Um, it's their enhanced Gen 2 version. There's not too much to say about it. Um, it's essentially a you know a buffer and buffer spring, but you know it kind of takes out that kind of cheese grady sound of the normal buffer and buffer spring that you find in an AR system. Um, as you can tell, there's not like that kind of really grady sound. Um, I haven't noticed that it's affected the recoil impulse um, at all. Uh, it feels like an AR. If you've ever shot one, you know you know it doesn't kick a lot, um, and it, you know kind of muzzle flip and stuff is more affected by the muzzle brake itself. So um, that's about all I got to say on that. But if you are keeping track of how much this costs, um, you know everything all said and done is about three hundred or three thousand seven hundred and forty something dollars. So if you throw in the two hundred dollar tax stamp it was to get the suppressor. Um, that's where I came up with that $4,000 mark. But uh, if you thought this video was cool, if you need some more info on any of the products that I've listed, uh, definitely shoot me a message or leave a comment in the description, or and then check out the description for uh, a parts list. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time.